The CHA Mark 40 electron beam evaporator is used to coat samples with various metals. During a process, a high intensity beam of electrons is focused on the center of a crucible containing a specified source metal. The energy from the electron beam causes the source metal to evaporate. The evaporated metal will then coat the surface of a sample with a thin layer. Unlike sputtered films, evaporators only coat the surface facing away from the substrate. E-beam evaporators will provide very little coating to the sides of any features that are perpendicular to the surface of the substrate. The CHA E-beam evaporator is equipped to evaporate titanium, chromium, gold, nickel, aluminum, and copper. It can be used to evaporate most other metals as well. The machine has the ability to hold up to six 3-inch wafers or three 4-inch wafers during the process run. There are also 4-inch blanks available for attaching smaller samples to. In a typical process, the chamber is pumped down to a pressure of 5 times 10 to the negative 6 torr to increase the mean free path. The mean free path of a gas molecule is the average distance the molecule travels before it collides with another. This prevents air molecules from interrupting metal atoms as they travel from the evaporation source to the substrate. Typical deposition rates range from 1 to 3 angstroms per second. Now let's go over the various parts of the CHA E-beam evaporator. The ion gauge is used to display the chamber pressure when the chamber is under high vacuum. The pressure is measured in torr. The Autotech 2 valve controller controls the valves that are used to control the vacuum pressure. The rocket switch has three positions. The down position is for pumping down, the middle position is for standby, and the up position is for venting. The deposition controller allows the operator to set up, program, start, and stop the E-beam system. The crucible selector moves the selected crucible into position for evaporation. The power supply controller controls the electron beam power supply. The XY sweep controller controls the position of the electron beam. For proper operation, the beam must move in a circle inside the crucible. The beam should not touch the edges of the crucible. The shutter control opens and closes the shutter. Ordinarily, the shutter is controlled by the deposition monitor. The shutter is closed while the metal that is being evaporated is being heated. Once the metal is evaporating at the correct rate, the shutter is opened, exposing the sample to the evaporation. Once the desired amount of metal has been deposited, the shutter is closed to prevent further deposition. The fixture controller controls the rotation and speed of the sample holder. Before you can begin using the CHA E-beam evaporator, you must first log in to the system at the access controller. Once you have done this, then you may begin operation. To begin loading your samples, you must first vent the chamber. On the Autotech 2 controller, move the rocker switch to the standby position under auto control. Wait approximately five seconds or until you hear a small popping sound. This sound means that the cryo pump valve has closed. Then move the rocker switch on the Autotech 2 controller to vent. It will take a few minutes for the chamber to fully vent. Wait for the bottom gauge B on the vacuum gauge controller to read approximately 7.6 times 10 raised to the 2 tor. When the chamber is finished venting, gently pull the chamber door towards you and then slide it down to its resting position. Move the rocker switch on the Autotech 2 controller back to the standby position. Place the sample tray on one of the nearby stainless steel tables. When loading a sample onto the tray, make sure that you place it face down. The bottom side of the tray will be the side that is exposed to the evaporation source. You should also make sure that the flat edge of each wafer is aligned with the recessed area located on each wafer cutout. This will ensure that your sample is properly positioned in the sample tray and that the evaporated metal is distributed evenly throughout the process run. At this point, you should check to see if the shutter is working properly. To do this, switch the shutter control to open. If the shutter is functioning properly, switch the shutter control back to automatic when you are done testing. You should now select the metal you'll be using for your process run. You can select the crucible by turning the source selector knob on the gun rotation control. The rocker switch should be set to the manual position in order to manually select the desired crucible. Turn the source selector knob to the first metal you will be using. For the purposes of this training video, we will be using titanium. When the selected crucible is in position, make sure that it is centered in the wedge-shaped exposure area. Check to see if the viewing mirrors are aligned correctly. You should be able to see the crucible underneath the shutter in the mirror. With your samples loaded onto the sample tray, you may now load it back onto the rotor straight. Slide the dowel pin up and gently guide the sample tray track wheels onto the rotor straight track. The sample tray should be level and snug when it is in position. 
You should not take the time to vacuum in and around the chamber. Make sure you use the soft tip attachment for the vacuum cleaner to prevent any scratching from occurring. If you cannot find the soft tip attachment, contact an IEN staff member. It is important to clean up any debris prior to a process run. A clean chamber will ultimately result in a smoother process run and better results. Vacuuming around the threshold of the chamber will also help the chamber door to form a better seal when the system is pumping down. At this point, you should activate the fixture rotation on the CHA fixture control. Move the rocker switch to manual. Turn the speed control knob all the way up to fast. With the rotor straight spinning, carefully lift the chamber door up to the closed position to seal the door. Move the rocker switch on the AutoTech 2 controller to start to begin pumping the chamber down. It may take up to a minute for the system to start pumping down. To begin programming the deposition controller, press F6 on the keypad, then press F2 for process directory. The controller will display a list of materials. Press F1, page forward, or F2, page back, to display all the materials. You will need to set up each material that you are going to use during your process run. Use the arrow keys on the keypad to highlight the material that you want to set up. Use F5 for process to display the settings for the material. You should only change the deposition rate, final thickness, and thickness limit. Ensure that the values set for final thickness and thickness limit are set to the same value. After you've set up the material, press F6 for process directory to return to the list of materials. If you wish to set up any other materials, follow the same steps. Highlight the first material you are depositing and press F4 for select active. This will set it as the active process. The number of the active process is displayed at the top of the screen. Press F6 for program and then F6 again for operate when you are ready to run your process. The ion gauge on the vacuum gauge controller will display the chamber pressure. The IG2 button to the right of the gauge should be lit. If it is not, press it to turn it on. You should wait until the pressure is in the 1 times 10 to the negative 5th times 1 times 10 to the negative 7th tour range to start depositing. If you are not concerned with deposition quality, you can start the process at a higher pressure. There is, however, a required minimum pressure of 4.9 times 10 to the negative 6 tour. If you want to run your process at a low pressure, it may take approximately 30 to 45 minutes. Make sure the IG2 button is lit before moving on. When the desired pressure has been reached, turn the key lock on the power supply controller to on. Lift the high voltage on button for three seconds. All five lights above the button should be lit when you do this. If they are not, consult an IE and staff member before proceeding. The voltage will appear on the digital display. Now, lift the gun control on button directly to the right of the high voltage button. If you are ready to start, press start on the deposition controller. Once your process has started, take a look at the viewing port in the front of the chamber. The beam pattern should be centered in the crucible. If it is not, use the position knobs on the beam sweep control 1 to adjust the beam. The beam sweep control 1 is located just to the right of the gun control. The position knobs adjust the beam longitudinally and laterally. Try to position the beam before the shutter opens if you can. When the process is complete, you can either deposit another metal or begin unloading the evaporator. If you plan to deposit another metal, wait about 3 minutes for the crucible to cool down for the last process. You can change metals by first pressing F6, Program, and then F2, Process Directory, on the deposition controller. Highlight the metal you want to evaporate next and press F4 for Select Active, then press F6 for Operate. Once your process has been selected, manually switch the crucible that you want for your second layer. On the gun rotation control, move the knob to the desired material and wait for the crucible to move into position. For every material, the high voltage and gun control switches must be turned on again. Once the process has been set up, press start on the deposition controller to begin running the process. Align the beam accordingly as you did with the previous metal. To begin unloading your samples, you must first turn the gun control switch and then the high voltage switch to the off positions on the power supply controller. When you have done that, Turn the key lock on the power supply controller to the off position. Wait approximately two minutes for the last crucible to stop glowing. Do not vent the system while the crucible is still hot. The metal will be destroyed and the crucible could potentially shatter. When the crucible has sufficiently cooled, move the rocker switch on the AutoTech 2 controller to the standby position. Wait approximately five seconds for the valve to close and then move the rocker switch on the AutoTech 2 controller to the vent position. 
it may take a few minutes for the chamber to fully vent. Wait for the bottom gauge B on the vacuum gauge controller to read approximately 7.6 times 10 to the second tor. When the chamber has finished venting, gently pull the chamber door towards you and then slide it down to its resting position. Move the rocker switch on the AutoTech 2 controller back to the standby position. Change the fixture control speed to slow and then move the rocker switch position to the off position. At this point, you should remove the sample tray from the roto straight. The shutter control should be set on automatic. Place the sample tray on one of the nearby stainless steel tables. Carefully remove your samples from the sample tray and then place it back onto the roto straight inside the chamber. When you have finished using the evaporator, vacuum the inside of the chamber to clean up any debris that may have been created during the process run. Make sure that you use the soft tip vacuum attachment. When you have finished, carefully lift the chamber door up to the closed position to seal the door. Move the rocker switch on the AutoTech 2 controller to start to begin pumping the chamber down. It may take up to a minute for the system to start pumping down. When it has finished, you may log out of the e-beam evaporator at the access controller. You should now have a good understanding of how to operate the CHA e-beam evaporator. You should be able to vent the system, load your samples into the system, pump the system down, program the deposition controller, and run the process. If you have any questions, please contact the trainer for this equipment. Thank you for watching.